This week, conflict zone is in Brussels as the European Union continues to face huge challenges. My guest is Guy Verhofstadt, the European Parliament's negotiator with the United Kingdom as it prepares to leave the EU. What is his solution for Europe's troubles? Guy Verhofstadt, welcome to Conflict Zone. Brexit, the Euro crisis, disagreement about refugees. Are we witnessing the last days of the European Union? I, I don't believe it, it are the last days of the European Union, but it, it are maybe the last days of this European Union of this kind of European what, Union. What do you mean with uh, this kind of European well, uh, Union? Well, European Union that... The Parliament will not exist anymore? Um, a new Parliament? Uh, with this European Union, I mean a union that is a, mainly a confederation of nation-states, still based on unanimity rule. And that doesn't work in the, in, the, in the world of tomorrow. But you, by yourself, you said, I quote, the risk of Brexit, Grexit, an expansionist Russia, the threat of further terrorist activities and atrocities combined with an uncertain economic outlook and an unresolved debt crisis mean 2016 is a make or a break year. Most of that has actually happened, so it's a break year. It could break, yeah. If we, uh, we are, are not... September, October, yeah. no, we are October, we November, still, December. We have still a, a few months, I should say. Three months? Yeah, but okay, it's a question, it's a fundamental, it's an existential moment, that's true. And, uh, or this U European Union will be reformed, or it will disappear. That's my opinion, I continue to believe You in think that. that the European Union can, could disappear? If it is not, if it is not reformed, yes, it, 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 because it cannot work like that. Uh, we have, uh, as you said, the refugee crisis, we have the terrorist threat, uh, we have economic problems, don't forget that. We have still banking problems, our banking problem has not been solved. In America they solved their banking problem immediately after the financial crisis. I understand, we, we, we so know it, about it's these an existential, problems. It's an yes. existential moment and, and this cannot work because it is a confederation of nation states. Yes, but based there, is, on there is something rule. very basic on the European idea and you have said European values don't forget them, will never be up for negotiation. But this is just grandstanding, isn't it? No, no, I think that the European values uh, are the basis of this European Union. But to defend these European values, you need good working European institutions. And that is the problem of today. Is it really like that it. or are the problems uh, as difficult to be solved that you need others? European values are under attack. Um, but you seem incapable of doing much about it. Take Turkey as an example. In March, you criticized the refugee agreement. You said, we, the EU, are giving Erdogan the keys to Europe. Seven months later, nothing has changed. I don't think that uh, the agreement with Turkey is a solution for our migrant problems. You cannot outsource these but problems. But there is an alternative? There is an alternative. Which the one? alternative is a European one. That means uh, a new European asylum system, uh, not longer based on, on Dublin. But the second will, is, will if, I may, if I may, a European border and coast guard. Yes, but, but it we will take don't time. have for the moment. But yeah, but it takes time. Every, everything takes time. Uh, every solution takes time. It is better to have a, a, a good solution for the future than to try to outsource your problems now to Turkey, tomorrow to Libya, after tomorrow to Egypt. Uh, that's not the way forward. But if you want to solve a problem, you need the member states. So let's speak about the member states. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban has sharpened his nationalist and anti-Muslim rhetoric. He has also closed borders to keep out refugees. Yeah. But Brussels has no power to make that Orban is comply no. with EU laws and accords. Exactly. That's the reason why I want to change and reform Europe. This Europe cannot work because member states have mainly all the power. You want and to if change. They don't, and the change is, the change is is that we need a real European government, what we don't have for the moment. That doesn't mean a commission So let's of talk about now. And that you, let's means talk about change now. Uh, the European I mean, Parliament. We can talk about the vision of tomorrow and after tomorrow when we talked about now, today. Today, the refugee crisis is a very big one. Hungary is saying no to any solution in the refugee crisis, and you don't have any power um, to no, that's him. not true. We have the power. We can, we can launch uh, Article uh, 7 of the treaty. 
and uh, my group is one of the groups uh, uh, asking for that. Secondly, uh, we can say to Poland, for example, don't go further on the part in which you, in fact, demolish your democracy by putting aside uh, the, the constitutional court, what you are doing for the moment. So it's not true. The instruments exist. What is lacking but is a know. system in which the majority of the European governments and the European Parliament can act. So the, but this, the, 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 but the problem this. of Europe is an institutional problem. My main point is that it is the unanimity rule. But Still, we are. Ba it's like in the United States. You should say that the 50 governors of the United States have to take all the decisions by unanimity. Should it work? No, everybody should say it doesn't work. That's exactly the way we are doing it. But so my criticism toward the European Union is even harsher. Is even more, I'm even more critical than okay, you so skeptics. Let's, let's, That's the point. So let's dream, it's not because let's I have, a I'm, 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 that I am so, a pro-European so no, so that I cannot be a critic. So let's dream a moment. You said about Poland. It is clear that if an accession agreement was to be sought now, it would fail. Does that mean that Poland should be thrown out of the EU? No. That means, Why not? No, I mean, they are no, not respecting... Sorry, that means that Poland has to change their attitude. But uh, that's the best solution. The, the best Poland, solution, in my opinion, Polish is Prime not Minister, to push out the people. The Polish Prime Minister will answer you are working on your problems, we are working on our problems. Again, no, today, sorry. today the situation is clear. The Polish government in Warsaw uh, has openly attacked the rule of law, freedom of press, women's rights. Why is the European Union putting up with this? Why, why are reacting? European Parliament has reacted and the European Commission reacts. And what we need is the backing if possible, of the European Council of what the Member would, States. What would so be again, your, again, what would be may, your may, may I try to explain yes. something? So I, again, if you analyze our weaknesses towards the Polish government, what you find at the end is that it is a problem of uh, yeah, weak European institutions that uh, are creating uh, this, uh, this mess. And what is again your the answer? Let me say you would have the power. What would you do with the Polish government, with the country? Will it still be a member state in the European Union? No, you could start with the number of sanctions. Would you do that? that? I should uh, propose a number of sanctions as foreseen in the treaty, uh, where uh, if they are not compliant with a number of values, uh, they can lose uh, some advantages of the European That's Union. That's all. I mean, no, the principle of Europe is democracy. There. It starts there, but the and then you can go further if they are not compliant with it. Why are uh, you so it. shy? I'm not shy. I, I'm, mean, we're I, I, I think about that I'm very yeah. radical because I'm proposing sanctions towards a country that is not compliant with European values, while today, <laughs> Hungary is not compliant with European values, Poland is not compliant with Who European else? values, and, and there are no sanctions uh, taken. Other like, states? let's be honest. Other states? Uh, no, well, I should give Greece, for example, for other reasons, for more economic reasons. They are not compliant with the Stability Pact, and we don't apply uh, the sanctions that are foreseen in the Stability Pact. And the reason why is that all the power is in the hands of, of the member states, and the member states that are friends together. The incompetence together. and failures of the EU offer excellent service to any populist who wants to promote anti-democratic and right-wing things. How I can contradict you? It's the reality. So, so, but the reality can. It's it's very good that you say, yeah, this situation, are you this European Union are you that doesn't work creates. Are you responsible for the rise of all these populist groups? Yes or no? Who is responsible? A, a, a European Union that doesn't work very well creates automatically populism and nationalism. So there so is the a responsibility. Only, yes or no? So the only way to react to this is not to fall into the trap of nationalism and, uh, and, and populism, but is to reform the European Union the fastest as possible. That is what I'm saying. I, 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 I'm saying that the only way to fight against nationalism and populism is to reform the European Union. And if you don't do it, we're going to see in every member state of the European Union, in France, in the Netherlands, in every member state, a rise of nationalism and populism. And we have the duty to Can tell to the, pub the public opinion, I, I, I if question. you don't, yeah, if, I understood. if, I, I if, if this European Union doesn't work, don't fall in the trap of nationalism and populism, but reform so let's, the Union. Let's, have, let's think about the future, because you like to do that. What will happen if France 
will elect Marianne Le Pen as president? I don't think that Marine Le Pen... What will happen? But Marine Le Pen will not be elected. Uh, so I'm, you, I'm, you know the... Uh, I know, the I'm, I'm pretty... I'm you don't I'm want confident. to think about that? I'm confident about the fact... That you are a politician. Let's talk about the case. It could be. What no, no, would this a politician mean? Is, uh, a politician doesn't do that. A politician fights for his ideas. And I'm fighting also but in you France. But coalitions. And there is a coalition. There is a coalition of people uh, in France uh, who are moderated, uh, who have uh, clear ideas, and uh, we want, uh, in fact, a but strong polls, France in a strong are, European Union. The polls Union. are saying other things. So let's talk no, about the, the Brexit. Not, sorry, you, that's not true what you're saying. Polls are the polls saying are not saying that, that Marine Le Pen is going to win be, the second round. That's not Brexit, true what you're saying. Brexit is one of the results of these failure, isn't it? I think that the Brexit is a, a, a huge problem for the European Union. That's true. And there are certainly a number of criticisms in Britain that are true. And we have to take them into account. Which ones? For example, too much bureaucracy in the European Union is certainly a, a point, a, a criticism in Britain This will that's not true. be changed in the next five years. That's not true. Uh, we have to do an attempt to do that. One of the ideas that we're going to put as European Parliament uh, on the table is the idea to reduce the European uh, Commission from uh, a body of 28 uh, uh, representatives of the member states to a real European government, can we speak for example, about the reality? limit to can we 12, speak 13 about or 14 people. Can we people. speak a moment about the reality? That's the Today reality. Today we have 28 members. Bureaucracy, is, as you said, is a problem. You are the man in charge of negotiating Brexit for the European Parliament. But some compromise is going to be needed to get a deal that works out both sides. Um, what are your proposals? We need, first of all, uh, the triggering of Article 50 by the government of Mrs. May. And uh, the proposal, the basic idea that I have in this negotiation, is not to destroy the European Union in this exercise. Because what the British want, or what some of the British people want, because 48% have voted to what remain the in Europe, but what the government want is to make a split between uh, the freedoms in Europe, uh, freedom of goods, freedom of services, freedom of capital, and they want to make a distinction with the freedom. What is your answer on that? May I really yes. finish my, 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 my sentence? What is Otherwise, your it's on not. That? It's not. A, so what they want to do is to make a split between these three freedoms and the freedom of movement of people. And we shall never accept that. The unity of the four freedoms for our citizens is a key element in this If somebody is negotiating and saying we will never accept that, so where are the negotiations? No, we will never accept to undo the European Union. You cannot expect that if the uh, British people or majority of the British people want to go out of the European Union, that we shall destroy the European Union. I have to defend the interests of the European citizens. But I have to defend the interests of the German citizens, the Belgian citizens, who want to keep the European Union because it's in their advantage, yes, but let's, this let's, European let's Union. Talk about it's their this work, it's their job. Let's talk about that, what is happening. The central issue is what is more important, the single market or freedom of movement. Prime Minister Theresa May say, has said, migration from the EU will be cut. So. What will happen? You well, said I never. think what will happen, what she wants is very clear. She has announced it in the Conservative Party uh, convention a few uh, uh, weeks ago. She announced that she wants a, a, a kind of free trade agreement uh, with the European Union. So uh, that will be the negotiation. But what we don't... With uh, never? A negotiation when one side is saying never? No, no, no. It's about a free that's, trade agreement. It's about a free trade agreement. What, what we don't, uh, what we shall never accept is to undo, to destroy the internal market, to destroy the European Union by saying to the people, okay, freedom of movement is not longer a basic principle of the Union. Nigel. I, 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 let's be honest. The freedom of movement is key for the European Union. The freedom of travel the possibility for, for German people to work into another country, that is the key of the European Union and we will never but destroy it. What, again, never destroy it. So where is the negotiation case? No, no, the that the means British are saying very clearly we don't want to have that anymore. No, and that's the reason why they want to leave the European Union. That's the point. And the question is now what is the new relationship 
between the European Union and Great Britain once Great Britain has left the European Union. And that will be the, the topic of the negotiation. So let's talk about uh, another challenging area, security. You have said the European military coalition is, is indispensable for the security of our citizens and will be the start of a real foreign and defense community in Europe. Yeah. This means a European army, doesn't it? Exactly, yeah, we are working on that, yeah. Doesn't NATO guarantee European defense? Yeah, but it's not in contradiction. NATO is a cooperation uh, transatlantic, and uh, it's clear that we need a strong European defense community inside NATO, because the Americans, and Mr. Obama has said it in Hanover a few months ago, said very clearly that there are limits to what the American army will do in Europe. And what he said is the um, Europeans have to take their own responsibility okay. in the also neighborhood. Also towards and that is Russia, what we need to do. Also towards Russia. You are concerned about Russia. You have talked about the dangerous whims of Vladimir Putin. But Putin has managed to find no, moreover, friends. Moreover, I'm on the blacklist of Vladimir Putin. It's, it's more than that. Okay, so whatever, but there are friends in the European Union, Budapest, Athens. Uh, what can you do about that? No, I think there is a very clear stance uh, and a, a unity of view in Europe towards uh, the, the threat uh, of, of Vladimir Putin. And that doesn't mean that we have to be anti-Russian. I think that we have to intensify our relationship with the Russians to give, for but you example... Have, you have relationship uh, with governments. I mean, don't be no, naive. No. What are you talking? I, I, no, I don't agree with you. You can uh, develop uh, a number of policies in, in Europe. Who is your uh, counterpart? In, 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 with whom are you negotiating? With the, with the people or with the no, government? No, with the civil with society the and at the same time with the government. And the civil society, you can help them. Why not, for example, but giving now, free visa to Russian students, to Russian, uh, Russian scientists? That needs to be done. But we have to be very tough towards the Russian government, towards Putin, because it's very clear that he is still a product of the Soviet Union and not of, uh, of everything what happened after uh, uh, the fall of the, uh, the Berlin Wall. Every day we are witnesses to the mass murder in Syria. What is the EU strategy there? Is there any strategy? There is a lack of strategy. There is no strategy in Syria. And there is also no strategy of the Americans uh, in Syria. We are Syria. talking about the Europeans. You no, are both. responsible the, for the Europeans. The international community in general, Europeans and Americans have failed in Syria. That is my analysis. But we are sitting here, we are talking about that. Why there are no initiatives of the parliament? Why there are not demonstrations? Can you explain me why we are not really engaged in this issue? No, we, the European Parliament has been engaged. Have I asked didn't hear a lot? A lot, yeah. There are uh, numerous uh, debates and, and, and resolutions. Did you condemn and, Russia? Uh, no, we condemned Russia in resolutions openly. We have asked to the European Council to be more tough towards uh, 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 Russia. And thirdly, we have said after the first attacks with chemical weapons by uh, Bashar al-Assad, to, to, to stop him, and we what have means to stop to him? Summon, to have an intervention, to create a non-fly zone in uh, above uh, Aleppo. We have asked that to, as European to Parliament. create a no-fly zone in Syria. This is opening the possibility of a military confrontation with Russia. Yeah, yeah, Are yeah, you okay. ready to but go yeah, to war? Yeah, but you you say uh, you say N A and B at the same time. If you don't want to create a non-fly zone above Aleppo, what you are mainly saying that I is that you. this that I is that, no, you. that when, what you are mainly no, suggesting no, no, is you. that these people. Uh, yeah, are under the uh, under uh, continue to be under the threat uh, of, you, uh, of Russia are you and Bashar al-Assad. Are ready to go to war? Russia is not listening to all your proposals. Are you ready to go to war? Because the, Russia is ready. The 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 uh, big mistake has been made at the moment that Bashar al-Assad has used his chemical weapons, and that uh, uh, Obama didn't but the intervene mistake in is this yesterday case. what is today well, still exactly today the, exactly, the are dying. Today. Uh, exactly the same today exactly the same today the only thing that we can do is a resolution based on creating a non-fly zone above Aleppo and if we don't have the guts and the courage to do it that means that these people will be killed by Assad and that these people will suffer, the con will suffer, continuously suffer you want, under this threat. You want a European army. This is the moment for a European army. Are you ready to go to war? 
Would you say Europe is now, would be in a situation... It's if not there a question of going to war, it's a question it's of a, protecting the people in Aleppo. But how do in, you in, want in to protect people when Syria and Russia are attacking, attacking these people? They need to be protected yeah, by an army. Okay, I agree with you. And you have to do that with an air force, because a non-fly zone is mainly a question of, uh, uh, in fact, establishing a, no, uh, a non-fly zone above Aleppo. That is the priority to do so. Is and Russia I am and not agree with you. There's not going to war. That is simply applying the decisions of the Security Council of the United Nations, because it is the Security Council of the United Nations, including the Russians, who agreed with a the ceasefire there, protecting the people but living not in the Aleppo. Last one. When and the French them. wanted to have now the decision, it was a veto coming from Russia. I'm talking about the previous... But I'm talking about the last uh, one. And, and I'm talking about the last one that have been adopted. Yeah, but this is, is a long time ago. a resolution, 2254 Today. of the United Nations, was very clear yes, on but, that. But you know about that. Uh, Putin was not coming anymore to Paris now. I mean, the last resolution was a very big conflict between all the other members and Russia. Is Russia the biggest problem today? In, in our neighborhood is the biggest problem, that is very clear. But the only, the only good lesson uh, that we have to take from that is let's organize ourselves European defense the fastest as possible. I agree because, with uh, your idea yeah, as an idea, but where is the more consequence? More than over, more where over. Are the consequence? Wait, wait a little bit. We started with that, was our as prime minister. We launched the idea of European headquarters. Has been blocked for years. Now, again, what I see is because after the Brexit, a number of countries, Germany, for example, France, are interested to start again with this idea. And I want to encourage them. Please. Instead, instead of, of, of saying, yeah, of I, to be uh, critical well, about it, I think we have to yes, encourage but let's to come create back, this let's European come back defense to community. The issue. Syria, possible. let's come back to this. And now, again, you promote an army. When you promote an army, an army has uh, something to do. Would this be now the moment? I think it's in any way the moment to do a European defense community because if we to continue with Syria, 20... To protect ma, ma, Syria. To protect Syria, to, be, uh, to, to, to strengthen our position in our neighborhood, uh, not only in Syria. It's a, a question of if Europe wants to play a role on the geopolitical level, on the world level, we need to organize ourselves the protection of our continent. You don't have any influence towards Mr. Putin. I mean, even sanctions are not important anymore. You don't have any power. I, I don't agree. Uh, I think that's because of the sanctions uh, against Russia, uh, there is at least not a worsening of the situation, for example, in the east of Ukraine. Because I cannot imagine what... No, he's what now you, in Syria. Uh, but OK, now we have the case not in okay, Syria. Not OK, he's now in Syria. I'm, that's one of the reasons why I think that also we need a number of sanctions in the case of, of, uh, of the Syrian question. Because uh, this cannot continue but what Russia is sanction, doing. Sanctions against Russia over Ukraine, Ukraine were useless. Nothing changed then. Would, why would it be now? I don't agree with you. Uh, it's uh, an attempt uh, that, uh, to push and to, uh, to put pressure on, on, on Putin to apply the Minsk agreement. That is what we are trying to do in the east of Ukraine. And if we uh, don't continue on that line, if we are not tough against uh, uh, Putin, enough. what he's going to do is to take yeah, not, not only enough. the east isn't of it, Ukraine, the whole of Ukraine. It's not enough, isn't it? He's in Syria. I have really to speak again about Syria, to mention that. The European Union is not existing in this case. But I agree with you. That is also what I said already many times here but in I this But I want house. to know what is to do, not what only is sanctions to do, against uh, Russia. What is to do is then to deliver and to build up a defense community but in the we, European uh, Union. Sorry, sorry first I have of to all, interrupt you. Uh, you will build up a defense force. You will build up an army. Till then, hundreds of thousands of people in Syria will not live anymore. Exactly. That is what I'm also saying. So what saying. are you doing that today? Is, that is also what I'm saying. That is that we need action, that we need an on-fly zone. And when I'm proposing an on-fly zone, you are the first here in your seat to say, oh, but that is impossible. No, you can I be... said that could have consequences. That shall have That's consequences. What I said. But I am ready to I... take the consequences. Even war? But Even soldiers? For me, that's not war. For me, it's applying the resolution of the UN Security Council. What and that doesn't mean, if you are weak, 
if you don't take your responsibility, this tragedy will continue in Aleppo. You know it, I know it. So my plea to the European leaders is, in the next European Council, it's in two weeks now, from time now, is to take the responsibility and to adopt a non-fly zone above Aleppo. And to do that not only themselves, together with our American friends, because alone, because we don't have a European defense community, we are not capable to do so. So we need America, we need Obama to do so. Guy and to convince Perlstad, him. Thank you very much for being on Conflict Zone. Uh, at least what you can say, it was Conflict Zone. <laughs>